Hello and uh, welcome to Gary's Garage. So uh, today, uh, if you're not new to the channel, if you've been around before, you know uh, I've done some stuff on the Santa Fe before. Uh, I'm back at the Santa Fe again and um, what I'm doing today, I got a few jobs, but the first job up is replacing the master brake cylinder. Um, so what the, the symptom is, it's my own complaint because it's my own car. The customer complaint is that when I, if I get to a red light and if I hold the brake down firmly and continue the press, the brake pedal slowly sinks to the floor. When I let it go, it instantly comes back and comes firm. But if you're in a panic stop, what that means is brake fluid is leaking by the seals. So in a panic stop, if you pressed hard, fluid would leak by and the pedal would start to go down and you get into that situation where you have only a certain amount of time to stop the car before your brakes go away. So not a safe situation so what I'm doing is putting a, a new uh, master cylinder. Now because this is a Korean car Hyundai, I bought a Korean master cylinder from um, Mandu. So, um, so the first thing to do However, the first thing that you need to do with this is uh, bleed the master cylinder. So I'm just going to, I've got this set up on the bench. So we're going to show you this. And, uh, but before I do that, I'm just going to show you what we need to do in the car. So to get access, the, the kind of access that you need for the uh, master cylinder, you, uh, you need to... Oh my, nice time for the battery to go out in the flashlight. Anyway, um, what you need to do uh, is get out the uh, air box for the, the air filter, which uh, it bolts in with three screws uh, here, here, and there's one on the ABS module, which is back here, right there. And these are 10 millimeter headed screws you use a long extension there 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 pull it out you do that after you remove the battery um, you can do it without it but it's just easier if you take it out it's no big deal to remove the battery and uh, and there we go so uh, and then I've set up the uh, master cylinder I've pulled the uh, electrical connector off there's an electrical connector for the low Oops, <laughs> sorry guys. Sorry, the uh, low um, fluid that plugs on the side. You just press this wire, pull it off. And then um, before I started the job, what I did is I took the 15 millimeter uh, open end wrench and made sure I could crack these loose. If they're too tight, you need to make sure that you have a flare wrench. Uh, so that's like a five sided or you know, the, the, the two little sides are smaller, but you can get it over the pipe and get over. And it's not quite a socket, but it's better than an open-end wrench. Because uh, you're pulling on more than uh, just two sides. Uh, so I just use an open-end wrench, uh, uh, 14 mil, did I say four? Yeah, 14 millimeters. Made sure that I could crack these and uh, before I started the job. So that's uh, it's a good tip. Uh, if you have an extractor, Extract as much fluid out of the reservoir as you can. I don't have an extractor here with me, so as I'm not in my home garage. So I've got the old coffee can. So once I crack this off, I want to get the master cylinder to the coffee can as quickly as possible and then drain out all the fluid. Um, and then uh, I'll put on the, the new one. Uh, with and I'll leave the bleed set up on it. So this uh, this bleed setup is uh, so you put it in the vise. I've used a couple of pieces of wood here so that I'm not squishing the aluminum or marring it because you've got to put uh, an O-ring seal here and uh, and it needs to seal. If you don't have a good seal with your O-ring, your your uh, brake booster could leak there and then you would also have a loss of brake performance so make sure you get that set up in the vise um, 
try and make it so that it's level in the vise and then um, and then what you do is you fill it up um, you have to put the lines in and the lines have to go below the surface of the fluid they if you read the instructions it says to fill it up to here but I don't want it that full so I made sure I pushed the lines in far enough so that when I when I pump it the uh, the fluid will go one way and then any air goes below the surface and escapes and then when you suck it back you don't suck the air in so <clears throat> um, the it takes a long time to get all the air out so what I've got is I've just got a like a quarter inch nut driver and put it inside and then I'll just push and when you push you push slowly and you'll get a little bit of uh, make sure you can see it so you get a little bit of air out and you push it in all the way until the air goes down into the reservoir and then you let go and it'll suck fluid back out so you just have to do this until and try and go as slow as possible you want to do this until um, there's no more air going through one of the problems is this um, master cylinder bleeding kit has these little plastic adapters and uh, they don't seal perfectly so um, what's been happening is that if you create any suction on this line uh, when you're releasing the pin it'll suck in air here and uh, then <laughs> then you just don't seem to get very far so um, the other thing I've been doing to relieve my strain is to this um, driver has a hole in the back so that you can use it as an extension and uh, is to use another screwdriver pushing in here and just use your body and do it nice and slow and if you keep like this eventually there'll be no more air bubbles look at that oh there's a tiny one but you just uh, keep working it until you get all the air out and when you no longer see any air in there you've you've successfully um, bled what I found was you know cycle it about 10 cycles or whatever and then let it rest let the let the air that's suspended in the fluid rise up in the master cylinder and collect at the top area which is just where the lines connect so it's the highest area and then um, uh, that way when then you com compress it any any small bubbles will join and they'll come up to the top and then when you press it ah, then you get a little bit more air out so it, it's just have to be patient so cycle it uh, four or five ten times and then let it sit for a while and then cycle it again let it sit for a while and you just it's going to take about 20 minutes of your time but do that until no more no more fluid comes out. Make sure you release it nice and slow, and that's uh, that's going to be a big part of your success. So, um, all right. So that is um, that part. So the next up is to get the uh, the old master cylinder off the. Uh, the um, try to keep my hands out of the way as much as possible so you can see. Um, so we've got the 14 millimeter wrench, and we're just gonna. I'm just gonna crack these. and get them to the point where I can spin them out by hand. Oh, that one needs a little bit more. I've got a cloth underneath to catch the drips, but you know it's, it, is going to, it is going to leak. And if I end up having to run one of these out, ooh, I might be able to turn it out with my fingers. Okay, um, so now, before I spin them out, because I want minimal drip time is I've got the 12 millimeter uh, ratchet and extension. You c I would use a longer one if I had one, but this is all I got today. So get these uh, nuts off that hold the, the master cylinder to the booster. starting to leak. There 
There we go. There we are. So that's that. And uh, there's a lock, looks like there's a lock washer, yeah. There's a lock washer in between the nut and the booster. Make sure we remove that, otherwise when you pull it off, your hardware is going to disappear. And uh, now we're going to get the one on the other side out. And air really won't get in. Okay. Alright, so I've got the, the unit over to the bench and it's still dribbling out here. I'm going to turn it and put the ports up and then just turn it upside down. The brake fluid, well, I did replace this brake fluid a couple years ago, but uh, it's still not bad. It's a little cloudy, but it's, uh, it's still not too bad. Now this thing will probably drip and drain for days. So, now remember brake fluid is kind of corrosive. It can um, destroy paint, surfaces, stuff like that. So be careful what you do with it, where you go with that. Um, one thing you can probably do is as soon as you get it out is bag it. Put it in a plastic bag and uh, so you can send it off to recycling or landfill or whatever you want to do with it. Some of it can be recycled. There's a recycling mark on it. Um, sometimes the plastic can be recycled. There's no mark on this one. So, But the, I know the aluminum and the steel can be recycled. So I will later on disassemble it and this part will get recycled and we'll trash that part. So um, We have to do what we can to minimize stuff. Providing when you send something to the recyclers, it actually gets recycled. So there we go. There's the old brake fluid. Um, so what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to take the new, uh, the new one just the way it is and I'm going to install it. But before I do that, I need to put the O-ring on. So uh, just stand by, I'll set that up. Now before I install the, um, the O-ring, I, I want to make sure it doesn't bind when it goes in. Uh, if it catches an edge, it will uh, tear and then you'll have a leak and then you know that's going to be a problem so I just put a little bit of silicone the nice thing about this is brake uh, brake lubricant silicone lubricant and the nice thing about this stuff is it doesn't react with the rubber and it won't shorten the life of the rubber so now I'm just going to in install this on the on the master cylinder and um, and I'm going to remove the master so from, once I start this, I'm not going to have my hands. Um, let me get this all installed, the O-ring is installed. And, uh, and now I just not need to carefully put this into the, uh, into the car. So well, let me take you over there and let's, let's see if we can get it done. A little bit of brake fluid, but not too much. So now the other thing we, we want to do is clean. I'll get a different rag, but I want to clean around the mat of the booster. So 
in this case it is sealing on the inside of this bore into the booster so that's where you want to where you want to clean it and uh, but you can clean it right to the edge too because you don't want to drag any any dirt inside when you when you put it in and you should whoops sorry I didn't realize I turned you the uh, you can see the plunger inside which is connected to the brake pedal mechanism and that pushes on the inside of that that bore on the master cylinder plunger all right let's get this in So I, the, the key here is to guide the plunger in. There we go. And then make sure that the, the brake lines are not interfering. Yes. There we go. Okay, now grab a washer. And the nut. This is the trickier one to do because all the lines are in the way. Here we go, just get them started. Then I'm going to grab the ratchet. Putting this in as my, with my fingers as much as I can. Here, let me grab something else. All right, so now I've got the nut driver or the quarter inch handle and uh, a 12 millimeter. Where'd you go? In the shadows. So that'll get you started. Now I'll switch to the... The one thing that uh, I noticed when I took these out is they weren't terribly tight. So, we're going to... Follow, and you probably see that. I, well, maybe you can't see. I'm just pushing, not hard. There we go. That's it. If I had to guess what the torque is, it uh, it was probably in the uh, maybe 15 foot-pound range. Something like that. So this it's not a lot. Um, we just want to keep it from coming off. Okay, so here we go. Um, next off, I'm gonna take off um, one of these uh, one of these lines, and then we'll put the back brake line in, and uh, and then I'll do the front one. So we're gonna do them kind of one at a time. So I need. My... All right, so. Uh, this part of this bleed kit had these adapters with had square, well, square flanges. So, now I'm going to 
spin it out. Brake fluid's going to come out pretty quick. Let's think of it as gravity bleeding, but oh my god, this is coming out quick. There we go. Got the, the line in the hole. And then you can push the line up against the, the bottom. Sort of bottom it, and that'll slow the fluid from coming out. There we go. That's one. I don't think there's a, any way of not making a mess when you're doing this. Put another rag in here. Crack this. Got out she comes. I forgot to put the cap on. That would have been smart. Putting the cap on creates a suction, which will slow the fluid from coming out. Duh. Yeah, because you don't want the fluid all to drain out. Because if you did that, you'd have to re-bleed it. So it's down low, but it's it hasn't gone away completely. And I've got my 14 millimeter wrench around here somewhere so that I can tighten these up and prevent any more fluid from draining out. Probably fast forward you guys through some of this. And uh, generally, you don't have to worry when the fluid comes out, pouring out. Um, air sh will not, normally, would not go inside. The, the air is coming from the, the top of the unit uh, through the opening. And uh, so I think of it as kind of like a gravity bleed. Okay, so they're snug. Now I'm going to clean up some of this fluid and then tighten them properly. Okay, so. Just before I clean this area up with brake clean, I'm going to now top up the, uh, the master cylinder here. Yeah, that's, uh, there we go. So, um, So following the, the bleeding on the vise, you also have to bleed the system because there's still going to be some air that gets inside. So bleed the system and uh, I'll show you a little bit of that. But um, bleed starting with the wheel farthest from the master cylinder. So that is your right rear, then do your left rear, then do your right front, and then do the left front last. Um, a little, little brake clean, as I say, because uh, brake fluid is corrosive, gives you a chance to uh, 
so to spray it off. The brake clean will actually run it off. It'll run down uh, underneath the master cylinder is the uh, is the ABS unit, and I've kept it covered up well enough. Well, unfortunately, the uh, camera memory ran out just as I was finishing. I was just working on the bleeding, and I was about to show you how to do the bleeding, but uh, I think you probably can figure out how to do the bleeding. The most important thing is to know that once you've bled the master cylinder installed, you get all the lines connected, that you go and you, and you bleed the individual ones. Start at the back corner, get all of those done, move on to the, uh, the other side on the back, do the front passenger, uh, finish with the driver, and uh, when you see no air, you're, you're good to go. Top up your cylinder, air, uh, your master cylinder, reinstall everything, and then uh, start the car, um, get some vacuum in, make sure the vacuum booster's not leaking, and drive the car and make sure that once you've got vacuum on that still feels firm and the car still stops properly. And uh, that's the end of the job. So again, thank you for watching Gary's Garage. If you have any comments, questions or whatever, please post them below. Um, if you like what I'm doing on the channel, subscribe. If you like the video, please like it. And uh, don't be afraid to share with others. And thanks for watching Gary's Garage. Bye.